and welcome everyone. Today, I am doing my spoiler review of Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Now, full disclosure, this is a spoiler review. It's even in the title, so there. If you have not seen The Rise of Skywalker, do not watch this video. Go on into the theater and watch the movie. It's pretty dang good. And then come back here when you're done. But if you have not seen the movie, I do have a spoiler-free review that is on the channel that you can watch freely, so... There we go. But this is your last warning. I'm about to drop a major spoiler off spoiler on, on you in three, two, one. Last chance. Palpatine is Ray's grandfather. That's right. Palpatine is Ray's granddaddy. And this is my this remember how in my spoiler free review I said um I had a problem with um a thing I couldn't talk about. This is the thing I want to talk about. Now, I love the idea of Ray being Palpatine's grandfather, because think about it, um, Kylo Ren, because don't get me wrong, I love what they did with Ryan Johnson's ver version of, like, Last Jedi, like, in Last Jedi, Rey was, t Rey was told she w was born from nothing, her parents were nobodies, and in this movie, they say that she was re the granddaughter of Palpatine, and I do like how they continued this, this thing, where, like, how in The Last Jedi, you know how Rey grew up with nothing, and she became a hero, while Kylo Ren what I uh, grew up with all like the good heroes, but he turned out to be a bad guy. But here they say that um, basically the reason why Ray didn't know about her lineage was because her parents didn't want Ray to be found. They didn't want people to know that she was the granddaughter of Palpatine. Because let's be honest, if you were like say the child or grandchild or like the most evil person in the galaxy, unless you're Luke Skywalker, you would probably be hunted down and murdered. And that's what happened to Ray's parents. They died protecting Ray from the people who wanted to find um, Palpatine's like children. But this is the thing I'm confused about: who was Ray? Or who was um, Palpatine's wife? Like they never say in the movie how he had a child. Like how did Palpatine, you know, conceive a child? Like who was the person he married? I'm guessing it was that senator woman he was with in um, Revenge of the Sith. You know that bald woman who is always with Palpatine when he's in like the Senate chair thing. But they never give, like, a full answer who is um, Palpatine's wife or if he even, like, used the Force to create um, a child, but still. And here's the thing about Palpatine's return. They could have done a little bit of a better job explaining how Palpatine is still alive. Um, in this movie, the most we get is um, Sith magic and cloning. Which I'm going to go with the cloning thing, but I do like how in the opening of this movie... Um, Kylo Ren is, like, going through all these people on Mustafar, and then, I'm not gonna lie, when Kylo went to Exegol, the place of the Sith, I, my heart stopped. Like, I was just terrified of Exegol in the first scene, because it felt like a horror movie, and my, and when P um Palpatine showed up, I was scared to death, and Ian McDermott was creepy as all heck. It felt like something out of a horror movie, it felt really scary, and I was just, like, on the edge of my seat, like, terrified. And I even like how he says some lines from Revenge of the Sith, saying, The pathway to the dark side can lead to many abilities that some might say are unnatural. Which is a really cool call callback to Revenge of the Sith, and yeah, I really like that. And also, I'm guessing the way he was brought back was because of whole... Um, Darth Plagueis being able to cheat death, and the fact that Sidious was the apprentice of Plagueis, he found out that, oh, he can bring himself back to life. Sort of like how Plagueis can bring others back to life. And also, it turns out, Snoke was a clone. But still. Now, let's talk about the stuff I really like in this movie. Now, while I did say I like the stuff about how Rey is, um, helping his grandfather, my complaint was the whole, you know, they never really explained how... Um, he was brought back and how he had a child, but still, um, I want to talk about some other things. Um, first off, um, let's address some of the criticisms, of, criticisms this movie gets. Um, for one, people say this movie has too much fan service. I don't know. I didn't really see that much fan service until, like, say, the end point of the movie. Like, say, around the last, um, 30 or so minutes. And besides, I can forgive the fan service in this movie. Because here's the thing, when it comes to fan service, when it serves a point, I'm okay with it. It. Um, my problem with fan service is stuff like, say, in Solo, where they had some unnecessary fan service, like, say, um, how did Han get his last name, or how Han got his blaster, 
that stuff is just not good fan service. But here, this movie does have fan service, but I'm okay with it mainly because it's the finale to the Skywalker Saga. And besides, Avengers Endgame had a lot more fan service than this movie because the second act of the film was about going back in time to the previous films. And the third act had all almost all the characters of the 22 films in the final battle, Cap lifting Mjolnir, um, Tony sacrificing himself for them saying, I am Iron Man, and Captain America saying, Avengers assemble, and plenty, plenty more fan service moments. So I don't really see the problem with the fan service in Rise of Skywalker, since I do think it works. Like, for example, there's a part at the end of the film where Maz Kanata says, I think this was overdue, and she gives Chewie the medal he should have had in A New Hope, because apparently he didn't have it in New Hope, so I'm glad they finally had Chewie earn the medal he so rightfully deserves. And I love how in the film, you see Chewie in the background showing the medal off to R2 and 3PO saying, look at me, I finally got my medal, um, like a little kid, which I thought was pretty funny. And also, um, the stuff with the whole like ships coming in to save the day was cool, and I really like how in the movie there's a lot of good character film moments. And also, now, this is something that I was originally, originally confused about, because in the movie, Finn t constantly asked Rey, um, Rey, I have to tell you something, but it never gets answered what he was trying to tell Rey. But throughout the movie, we see that Finn is Force-sensitive, because throughout the movie, he does do that thing where, like, you know how in Empire Strikes Back, um, Leia was able to sense um, Luke dangling off of a um, vest pin? Well, they do something similar to that with um, Finn, and being able to sense Rey when um, Rey was fighting, um, you know, Kylo on the second Death Star. Um, and on the chunks of the, what's left of the second Death Star anyway. And J.J. Abrams confirmed that Finn was trying to tell Rey that he's force sensitive. So, yeah. And also, I want to talk about something. You know Dark Rey? That thing has been in, that, the thing that has been in every trailer since it was first revealed all the way back in August? Well, apparently, it was just a force vision by... Um, Ray, because when she's on the remains of the second Death Star, trying to find like the piece that's missing, because like she has like this Sith dagger and she's trying to find the Sith hologram, um, she has this vision of seeing herself as Dark Ray, and she has a double bladed lightsaber, and she's like fights Dark Ray a little bit, and yeah, that's all it is for it, and yeah, I guess Dark Ray was just for nothing, but hey, I kind of like what they use. Dark Ray 4 is like saying that this is what Ray could become if she decides to join the dark side and become Empress Ray Palpatine. Before I forget, let's talk about two other new characters that they added. Um, Zora Bliss, who is revealed to be an old friend of Poe. Apparently Poe was like a spice smuggler back in the day before he became like the best pilot in the resistance. And I even like the joke where um, they're like, you were a spice smuggler? And Poe says, well, you were um, a scavenger and you were a stormtrooper, so why can't I have been a spice smuggler? It's kind of funny, all things considered. And there's also a new character named Joanna, who was a part of this battalion of um, stormtroopers who decide not go to go against who decide to go against the first order's wishes and drop out and you know defect sort of like um Finn from the Force Awakens. Yeah, she's basically just female Finn, though not as cool as Finn. And I do like how they even expand more about how stormtroopers um have emotions and Finn isn't the only one who decided to reject the first order. I thought that was a cool idea. And yeah. And of course, Let's talk about the action. The action is really good. Um, I really like the speeder bike chase uh, the, around the end, beginning of the movie. And I even like some of like, the prison escape where they're like, trying to free Chewie. And yeah, and I even like that part where um, it's revealed that Hux was actually the spy for the Resistance. And he's all like, I only became a member, I only became your spy because I was sick and tired of Kylo Ren. And he even like tries to fake being injured. But then the guy was like, I know you're the real spy. And he like shoots um, Hawks right in the chest killing him. It kind of reminded me of, um, Callus from Rebels, except Callus didn't die, but still. And now let's talk about the emotional moments. They are really hard-hitting in this movie for me, since I'm a big Star Wars fan. One moment I really liked was the part where C-3PO said, R2, you are my best friend. And that scene just really, it really hit me hard, since I really feel the bond between 3PO and R2. They were the first Star Wars characters we ever got to see on screen. And hearing... 3PO say, 
Um, even though we've been through some tough times, you have always been my best friend, R2. Just really got me in the feels. I'm not I'm not the giant soldier of stone from Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? I have, I have the soft spot. And also, I love the stuff they did with Leia. Expanding on Leia more, even though she had like around eight minutes of screen time, she was still great. And I love how it took, and I even love how she gave her own life to try and get Kylo Ren back to the the light side because in their because when Rey and Kylo Ren were fighting on the second Death Star, well, like what's remaining of the second Death Star, um, basically Leia sends a message to Kylo, which distracts Kylo, and Rey like stabs him in the gut, and while he's dying, um, Leia decides to use her energy of the Force and kills herself by and gives it to Kylo so Kylo can still live. So she's basically saying, this is going to be my last gift to you as a mother, giving you the, the my life force and to keep you alive. And I love how after this battle, it's Han. Where you see um, Kylo Ren is like complaining what to do. And Han comes in and they have this sort of, it's basically um, sort of like their um, scene on the bridge in um, Force Awakens. You know, the one where Kylo stabs Han. And there's a part where he says, I don't know if I have the strength to do it, but Han says, I know you will make the right choice. And Kylo takes his lightsaber and throws it. I'm not going to lie. I actually thought to myself, is he going to commit suicide? Is he going to take that lightsaber and stab him in the chest? But he doesn't. And I love how it was Han, who Han and Leia, that brought Kylo Ren back to the light side. And I just love that moment so dang much. And there's a part where um, Rey chucks the lightsaber into the fire. But Force Luke grabs it and says, this is not how you treat a Jedi weapon. And of course, it's a callback to when in Last Jedi, you know, Luke threw the lightsaber as him learning from his mistake, saying, this is not how you treat a Jedi weapon. And I love how he explains that Leia had her own lightsaber. That moment made me freak out that Leia had her own lightsaber and she was going through training to become a Jedi. That was cool. Now, it's time to discuss the ending of the film where Rey destroys Palpatine once and for all. Now, I'm not gonna lie, if Palpatine stayed dead in Return of the Jedi, I would be completely satisfied since it was a good send-off and a good wrap-out for um, Anakin's character arc. But I do love the way he was defeated in this movie. Movie since, in case you don't know, Rey is like staring off into the stars because she's almost dead from all, the, from all the damage she had in her battle against Palpatine. But she hears all the Jedi Knights of the past with some of them being Obi-Wan, Anakin, played by Hayden Christensen, Mace Windu, Yoda, and of course, Ahsoka Tano and Kanan Jarrus. That made me freak out since I'm a big fan of the Clone Wars, and hearing Ahsoka's voice made a smile on my face, and yeah. And all of them gave Rey the strength she needed to destroy Palpatine once and for all, and it was so cool having the giant knights of the past live inside Rey and giving her all she needed to destroy um, Palpatine, which was cool, and I love how at the end of the movie, she goes off to Tatooine, where the saga began, and she buries, um, Luke and Leia's lightsabers in, by, um, Luke's old home, which is nice, and I love how she calls herself Rey Skywalker as saying, I don't care if I was a Palpatine, it doesn't matter my past, I choose my destiny, which is a good thing, because the theme of this movie is identity, how it doesn't matter where you grew up, you decide your own fate, and I love that theme so much. And she stares off in the distance with BB-8, looking at the twin sons, and it's just so beautiful having the ending shot of the saga being the iconic stare at the twin sons. It's perfect. And I love how she shows off her own lightsaber, which is a yellow lightsaber, which is something that it's normally used by um Jedi Temple Guards, which is awesome. And yeah, I love how she even like stares off and sees the Force Ghosts of Luke and Leia, and that was so sweet. I love that so much. And I love how Kylo gives his life to give to Rey as Leia did for him. And yeah. So with that being said, that was The Rise of Skywalker and my thoughts on it. I love the movie and I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. See you all later and good day and I hope you enjoyed the review. Bye.